Hello and welcome back everyone as we're preparing for game two of our final week of games here for LCS Academy. Summer split. The Golden Guardians Miracle Run is done. It's over. I, I was a believer, Covey. I thought they might be able to do it, but TSM said, no, we're going to put those uh put those dreams to rest real quick here. That was a pretty yeah. dominant performance. It, the Miracle Run would just have to be made by the LCS team as they are, of course, racing for yes. the place. Uh, but for the Academy squad, they're going to find themselves now in the United Grand Prix, uh, which honestly, if you're a fan of Academy and as someone that covers semi-pro, we have pretty strong expectations that all the four Academy teams will be making it out yeah. of that tournament, especially given the fact that Wildcard Red, the team that won all three Proving Ground Tier 2s, will not be in it as if you qualified. You don't need to play, so you get a replay mm -hmm. of the 4-4-0. Uh, and this is what got the game started for TSM, and honestly what ended the game for Golden Guardians pretty early. Uh, yeah. As this roam and play, the fact that Hyper stole away the blue buff, stole away the Gromp with a contest from Rose Thorn, like got a double advantage, and he used that with a front-to-back with Oldok catching all those axes to snowball this game. Pretty heavily, as uh, Aatrox didn't really get past uh, being down half health, and the one time he did, uh, they got Baron. So I'd say it's pretty worth it. And keep in mind that not all, I, mean, I think the, the replays will really show the, the hype from TSM's side. There were like one or two fights that went to Golden Guardian Academy's favor. Um, this is not one of them, <laughs> unfortunately. But it felt like that early play, that early invade, it was just Golden Guardians getting a little antsy, trying to activate their composition a little too early. And I just, I just want to give some time to everyone to appreciate Hansa right here. And boom. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a lot of damage and a lot of healing coming out from the Aatrox. I actually really like the pick um, as Hansa won lane. Uh, it's a pick that you can win team fights with when people have to come into you. And Hanser ended up taking this game in a pretty stylistic fashion as Golden Guardians. They were forced to group up as five, forced to make their composition work. But PSM just put out the map a little bit too well with that early lead they had. The fact that they had Two pretty strong solo laners as the game went on. Managed to take down the Guardians in rather dominant victory as TSM. Uh, we talked a lot about the Golden Guardians, that Miracle backdoor for sixth place. Well, TSM, they're the ones that hold that position and want to mm -hmm. maintain that spot going into Academy playoffs as that is their goal. Yeah, and I don't want to spoil anybody in case you're not able to watch both streams at the same time. I want to save the other Academy matches for later. Um, so if you don't want spoilers for what's happening on Immortals versus Cloud9, mute the stream right now. You got, I'm gonna, you're going to have five seconds. All right, Immortals are up 1-0 in that series too. So the, the race for that sixth place spot is actually very close. TSM are really hoping to pick up this win. All right, you're good. You're good now. If if uh, if you muted mute. the stream, that's that's the signal that you could come back in and listen again. You should have um, communicated the signal like before you had a mute. because like, Now they don't know how to come back. True. We're, We're going to workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they don't read lips also because they probably just uh, understood what I said uh, regardless. But the, the race for that sixth place spot is still alive and TSM Academy will be hoping to pick up a second win here. We'll be working towards a second win here because that will just further solidify themselves as that sixth place team. So let's look at it from TSM side first since they're the one that really still have stakes left in this series and in the week as a whole. You're just coming off of a pretty strong win here. Is there really anything that they need to change up, or is it just going to be smooth sailing for them in Game 2? I'm curious to hear. Uh, we don't know if it's Takeover or Sword for Game 2, and so oh. I'm kind of curious to see if they swapped up their mid laners. This is something that TSM has been doing even mid-series, uh, as they've been utilizing uh, both of their talented mid laners. They've had, I know that uh, their opening record with Sword, I believe at one point it was 3-9, and nine, but Sword's actually mm -hmm. been playing very well, started to really pick up his play. He's improved his laning phase, and um, it started the net more and more wins for TSM, as I will gather his uh, win loss here in a sec to give some credit over to Sword, which is well deserved. <laughs> but Takeover has still been a very impressive talent, and they have two mid laners, uh, kind of a uh, bountiful riches uh, for TSM Academy, and they've been using it pretty well this split. I've liked the look with Takeover more throughout the entire season, but you're right, Sword has been picking up the play in the second half. And that's the best time you want to pick up your play. You'd rather start off a little weaker and then finish strong rather than the inverse of that. Uh, so yeah, TSM Academy, let's see if they can make the 2-0 happen. Now let's talk about from Golden Guardian's side. They're out of playoffs race. So from this point forward, try to play upset, I suppose. If you can take that win over TSM Academy, that feels good. A little revenge here. They're no longer competing with the Mortals now. Maybe they're on Immortal side. Say, okay, at least take out this team that just knocked us out here. Uh, so could be looking to give Immortals an easier run. But if we look at just from either draft phase or in-game decision-making, 
what were the big mistakes that they made in that game and how do you expect them to approach fixing those and cleaning those up going into game two i mean uh, that bot lane invade was i, I think the yeah. four golden guardians like that's a matchup where you don't really expect to get push as Ezreal Tarek, but uh, Prisma and Nubia play the early landing phase pretty well against Cody Sun and Dursan, and so they're going to try and use that to get the bot crab for Zin Zhao, and then Rose Thorn kind of got, eyes got a little bit too big for the stomach, tried to go for the blue buff and the gromp, and that was close. I mean, if he dings level four and Hyper's level three, they're able to get there and support him in time. That's the position that Golden Guardians want to be in, right? Because you have mm. Karma Zin, you have a Tarek that can help enable the Zin Zhao quite a bit, and your, your two damage dealers in that game are going to be Zin Zhao and Ezreal. And so you're in the position where you're enabling both of them with supports in the 4v4 at a stage of the game where they're pretty strong. Zin Zhao is really known for his early game. It's, the target selection wasn't there. TSM outplayed them in the fight. Um, they weren't able to get there to support him fast enough. So the game went how it did. Uh, and if I'm Golden Guardians, I, I kind of say, you know what, scratch that. That game was, it was over pretty quick. We fought as hard as we could moving forward from there, but... That was a tough hill to climb once we got in that deficit. And I, I kind of reset and play to their strengths. I think they do play well with Karma mid. And they're mm -hmm. good when they play the supportive mid laners trying to enable Rosethorn, who has had a, shown a lot of improvement and growth throughout this academy split. And so I think playing through him and, you know, just trying to get Rosethorn ahead and then snowball that into getting Prismal ahead is still the game plan for Guardians. And I, I think they just kind of fumbled what their game plan was, a game plan that we usually see them execute upon rather well. Yeah, and again, just more shout outs to Rose Thorn. I think that the story of this player throughout the entire season has just been nothing but growth. Even like looking all the way back to spring. And I, he was recently on uh, Tim Seven, who's in a uh, shout out to Tim, uh, you know, LCS Academy players to watch on the latest mm -hmm. episode there. So it's not just us casters as broadcast now, it's also people reading all the stats, keeping track of all of the, uh, the game outcomes. Uh, Rose Thorn has been turning some heads, and I think the improvement from these players is really fun to see in the Academy scene. And this is the first wor word that it is sword in the mid lane for this game. Mm. So no changes for TSM Academy uh, coming into this one. And I, I, I'd say, I mean, they've been doing this not really based... I, I don't know, like, what the theory is behind this from TSM, like, when they play which mid laner. Um, but, hey, uh, don't fix it if it ain't broken, right? Sword got him that <laughs> first game, looked good, and uh, hoping to look good in this next one, working with Hyper as we're going to get a run back of the picks and bands. And Kangas, even though the sides are swapped, it seems that the bands are remaining the same so far. Except that Golden Guardians is taking that away fun. that Ezreal. Despite the fact that they were the ones that piloted it in that last game, maybe just identifying that as a better uh, blue side pick rather than a red side pick. So the, the Ezreal for Cody Sun, it's 5-0 and this split. But I think this is actually setting up for Golden Guardians to go for a 1-2 Varus. Uh, and trying to take away the mm. counter that they used to answer the Varus uh, on Blue's side in the last game. As yes, I'm going to keep respecting the Senna comps coming out from Golden mm. Guardians. Do not want to see the full effects of Prismal's champion pool, as it gets pretty crazy. Uh, it has a Wukong in there and more picks that I'm sure he has up his sleeves, as it's referenced a lot by these players in post-game interviews that Prismal... Different take on how to play the bot lane. That Wukong yeah. and the Ballista counter is very clever from him. One of the more unique uh, AD carries that we have in Academy in terms of the champ pool, in terms of play style. So it's always fun to watch Prismal play. And the Nautilus band comes through from Golden Guardians Academy as well. Let's see what TSM want to lock in for their first pick here. There's still a couple priority picks they can go for. I still just like the focus of these bot lanes. Like the, the pinched AD carry pools means that we're going to get very different looks. You're thinking Zin Zhao here? Yeah, it should be Zen. Uh, might as well throw it the old school D1 okay. pick the last few patches as my camera decides to give the 90s pixels as uh, I I'm doing like my okay, Chan. I can still hear you great. That's the important yeah, part, I you know? I, I feel like I'm kind of like Chandler Bing from Friends, like, you know, with this look or get up. And now the camera pixelization is really matching that. You know? So we're, we're going True. all in. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, the uh, replays or re, re, re streams. What do, what do you call it when it's on TV? I actually, I'm too young to, to know that. Re is re something? I did watching the reruns, you know. Reruns, there yeah, we go. There That's we go. it. The reruns back on, uh, on cable television. Yeah. That's what you're looking like right now. Wow, that is shocking that I couldn't even think of that word. 2021, everybody. Golden Guardians Academy lock in the volley bear with the Varus as their first two picks. So you're right, they were opting for that Varus on Red One, Red Two. So the Volda Bear is Rose Thorn's answer and his strongest champion throughout this split. But the answer is in Zhao. and Golden Guardians like to pair this with a Karma mid. Uh, and so if TSM has been doing their homework, Golden Guardians now have a choice whether or not they want to secure the Karma here, or if they want to try and counter the Alistar. 
as this is your son's most played. He has 13 mm. plays on the Alistar with a very high win rate, as he's very good at this pick. And Cody's son and him are good at this bot lane pairing specifically. The Golden Guardians actually have a tough choice. Do they take a support counter to try and match the waning prowess of TSM's bot lane? Or do they take that Karma to try and support the Volibear? And guess what? It's totally Neither. different. It's going to be the yeah. block. You got a completely different read from you, Cubby. I don't know what uh, what notes you've been taking, what you've been studying for these teams. Clearly, Golden Guardians opting for that patch, LeBlanc. Yeah. True. New patch. And also, this is a takeaway from Sword. I guess you can you can argue uh, fairly safe mid laner because now they can just ban away some of the LeBlanc counters here uh, on their second round of bans. It will be a different look for Yumbi, though. It's not going to be that supportive mid laner. It's not going to be that Karma. Uh, that helps enable the Volley Bear. Instead, something that's a little more self-sufficient. Your son's Alistar, 13 plays, 9 and 4 from the champion. Wow. In the academy. He's been one of the few supports that's really still leaning on the cow. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can get that uh, cow out of landing phase, still very powerful pick that your son is very good at. since most played in his career as well. And taking away some of the counters, right? So Brahm's the lane that you can kind of handshake Alistar with. Whoever gets the stun off first kind of wins those 2v2s. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also decent into the Tristana. And I actually wouldn't be surprised to actually take away a Terek as well, because that's something that you can pilot into the Volta Bear that's pretty good in the Zinzao too. Yeah, and also it just it helps enable the uh, engage range of the Blanc a little bit more. Like you said, pairs up with that Volley Bear very well. That's uh, going to be the Jace instead. DSM Academy opting for a top lane ban. Interesting. I'm wondering what this is telling us they want to play. Maybe just taking away something that Niles can be a little more self-sufficient on and try and carry through. Uh, potentially, uh, Golden Guardians will pick support here to try and give Niles a counter pick and to keep the Volta Bear flex. Because Niles mm -hmm. is someone that happy to pilot the Volta Bear. Oh, I like this. Galio's an old school counter to Alistar. Has a pretty good landing phase uh, and can follow up the Volta Bear when he goes in. So, yeah. uh, not a bad pick from Golden Guardians. I like that. Uh, as TSM have to find both their solo laners. They have a counter for the Blanc. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a rise here, uh, as that has been a pick rising in priority. Uh, and then top lane, something that Jace beats, potentially a Nar could be an easy blind here for Haunts. It's something that he's historically played and pretty comfortable on. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the Rise. And, or Tom oh, Kench. The Kench. There we go. Just go for it. I mean, why not? Now you have the Rise in the sideline plus the Tom Kench as well for team fighting potential. And also, it, being away, the Jace prevents a lot of the poke from the Varus Jace combo with the LeBlanc jumping in, preventing the extra poke. We saw the Akshan hovered, not enabled right now. So. No, no one, no one, get excited when you see that champion. Uh, I'm sure the refs are yelling at newbie right now, like, "Don't, don't do it, don't do it." And instead, they're hovering over at least Sin. It, this would be interesting—a pivot back towards the Lee Sin in the solo lane. You would assume for Niles, unless Niles does want to pilot the Volley Bear instead. Uh, Lee Sin's still a okay in the solo lane. Um, his base damage falls off as things go on, but you're still able to do the same things that you want to do as Lee Sin in team fights when you're playing the solo lane Lee Sin, which is kind of go in, be a nuisance, buy time, use the Gorge mm -hmm. Rinker to get as many uh, people as possible to heal up as much health as possible, and then kind of get out uh, as we just dance in and out. And this will keep threat on Sword, uh, as Sword is going to be the immobile carry that they're trying to get on and shut down if you are Golden Guardians. So I, think overall, I just don't think they need this much. Like, they already have the Volibear. They already have the Wonk and the Varus. Yep. And I don't see the least in it doing anything against Tom Kench in lane. Oh, no, it's but no one does anything against Tom Kench in lane. Uh, yeah, fair. The, the, yeah, the, this patch, I believe Tom Kench has a winning top lane matchup against every top laner on the patch. So, um, yeah, uh, that's solo queue stats, different from competitive, but kind of gives you an idea of how powerful he is in the game. Mm -hmm. As, uh, yeah, we're going to have to see if Monster can pilot it to a little bit more success than Niles, who had a decent laning phase, but uh, fell off as the game went on. Against the Tom Kench, I guess I'm just more looking for things that, if you're not going to beat the Tom Kench in lane, can do more outside of lane. And again, just the least hit, it almost feels like a threat overload composition. One of the other casters, Joshi, talks about these a lot, where yep. there's so many damage uh, on your own team that uh, you just hard dive onto one person. You have everybody able to do damage to that rise. So Sword will have to play very careful here, despite Hanser being able to hold Niles in lane, because once Niles gets out of lane... Yeah, there's a lot of people gunning for you. But here we go, Cubby. We're loaded on to Summoner's Rift for Game 2 of this Best of 2 Series. TSM Academy against Golden Guardians Academy. And TSM still looking to pick up as many wins as possible so that they can keep that sixth, uh, sixth place spot and their playoff dream alive. Yeah, what better way to keep that 
six way uh place spot than just going four zero this week if you are in right. the TSM camp. That is their goal. As Immortals has a pretty tough schedule, as you mentioned, going up against C nine TL, two teams that we expect to see in the Academy playoffs, and we need a win or two to secure those spaces themselves. Uh, but Immortals going one zero against C nine. They've got to win as many games as they can. Do Cubby, see if they can do that. You didn't give a a spoiler warning. Oh, I I, I told you we're workshopping that. As... <laughs> well, they can't see us anymore, so we can't give them the true. hand signals either. Yeah, it's all right. That's true. Well, as... you heard it now, so that means that the 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 race for that sixth place is still alive. Yeah, and curiously enough, uh, both junglers once again starting on the top side of the rift. I, uh, Golden Guardians have the winning two v two here early with the Varus, so uh, they should be able to maintain priority in this bot lane. As Niles getting a heavy trade, utilizing the extra attack speed. W buff gets here against Hauntzer. Is he going to win these? Hauntzer, actually he is. There we go. He's just life stealing through it. Still fairly close, but slightly denials. And I, I'm somewhat surprised that we don't have Hyper pathing towards this top side. Because you'd expect that Tom Kench can get priority in this matchup early. But it seems like Niles knows something I may not. Skilling W and taking advantage of Conquer early. Well played from him. A level 2 hit for Prismal and Newbie bots at earlier on, but they don't find the engage you're looking for. That's TSM. Your son does have a small window here where Newbie doesn't have his cooldowns, but also use the Pulverize, so not going to go in for anything. But yeah, the junglers both passing towards the bottom sides. That means that they it will come down to bot priority. Who's able to get that for that scuttle? And also mid priority, because Yunbi should control this. Prismal should control bot. This is pretty good news for Rosethorn. And Hyper might just have to pass back up towards the top river. Options to be made as both junglers are going to full clear. And we're going to have to see if this is a bot lane contest. As, uh, yeah, so Yunbi is doing this to get an item, to get full health, and to get three corrupting potion stacks back. Uh, and that's going to help him try and secure one of the crabs here for Rosethorn. Mm -hmm. As he does get that dark seal, we'll try and pressure sword, who's pretty low on the mana bar, and control this thing and force sword to lose, bleed out some creeps as he's going to have to be back to respond as well. As Yunbi should be cutting the wave here, trying to pull it. Uh, I think he's going to let the two melees go into the turret and then try and pull the wave and force the DP. This will help secure Rosethorn that first grab. So good team play from Golden Guardians, taking advantage of the priority in the bot side, a nice DP from Yunbi, and the Boulder Bear matchup. And Hyper is not even immediately passing to the top scuttle. He's spotted out by Newbie here. This gives information to Rosethorn to say, hey, I'm a level up. I can just run directly to the top side. And Niles now getting aggressive onto Haunter. Can look to push this wave in as the Lee Sin. Hyper is about to get double scuttled here as the Zin Zhao. And this, this is just really good play coming out from Golden Guardians. This Niles, he was able to three wave, three wave crash. Ace get a Doran's Blade, so he has more items than Haunter. Didn't even have to burn his TP. Yunbi burns his TP to guarantee that Rose Thorn has priority. And this is a textbook play of just playing for jungle. Coming out from Golden Guardians early. They are going to sack a Creeper 2 in the bot side, but I think they're okay getting Rosethorn off to a good start and making sure that he might be able to pressure uh, the Xin Zhao as this matchup goes on. And we did see there Yersan looking for a cute little wraparound when they saw Newbie in the river thinking, okay, if Prismal's alone, we can dive him under turret, but Prismal went for a reset early, picked up the Serrated Dirk. Cody Sun waits a little bit longer for the reset, so coming back to lane should have a slight item advantage. Goes for the pickaxe, actually, instead of... The uh, the quiver. So, as pickaxe plus the control ward, looking to make sure that the bot side just stays safe. But I like this from your son again. Getting on the map here, the Alistair goes to the reset, picks up boots, and just runs immediately to the mid lane. Yeah, we, we saw your son in the last game. I mean, by this point, TSM already had that big lead as they did find the fourth row. Uh, but your son specifically did, did a great job of roaming around the map, making sure that uh, he's helping his team secure more advantages. And on the Alistair, we'll be looking to do that, as Alistair is at his best when he's outside that waning phase, where he doesn't really contribute that, that much. And Newbie is hovering, so more respect being shown for Golden Guardians, and I think one of the reasons why they took Galio in this uh, support matchup to have a little bit more of that global presence and the ability to match oh. your son's roams. Does Prismal know that your son's here? Yeah, you have to. You have to assume, at least, when your support's not nearby, you are in danger. Actually, yeah, the ward would... Actually, no, that was... a. Uh... TSM's ward. So, Rizmal just walks forward. Your son does not find the engage and is spotted out. No actual will happen on the bottom half of the map. And so far, very slow game. It's just been about finding these slow tempo advantages 
for these junglers, for these mid laners, making sure that they're getting these scuttles. But eventually something will have to crack open, and I want to see Golden Guardians going for that earlier play, because when you're looking at the scaling of a Tom Gensch tank frontline, the rise in the Trisana, you kind of want Golden Guardians composition to make that first play, to go for that first punch. I think they're going to try and look to do it around this dragon. It's what we talked about with uh, the Varus compositions, is oh, there's someone to break it. On. Locking down Prismal. Now Newbie has to flash away as well, so Summoner's blown from Golden Guardians bot lane to stay alive here. Ready for your son, Summoners. Rosethorn was in the Dragon Pit clearing out a ward, and uh, Hyper was ready for the gank. So, Golden Guardians, they should get this scuttle again. But the CSM Academy want to try and force the Dragon now that they have an advantage oh. in the Summoner spells. Watch for Newbie. Newbie's He's got the Blast about Cone. It. Here we go. And also, Yunbi's here. Swords joined in with the wave as well. But look at that burst there! Yursan getting the kill, or uh, rather, Prismal getting the kill onto Yursan is traded back, but no, Hyper can't even get one. He goes down two, a quick three for zero. Rosethorn survives, has to be careful here, doesn't have Smite to heal up. The Golden Guardians will go on to the Dragon regardless. Yeah, he's got his W and his shields, and Rosethorn played that skirmish beautifully when we get the replay as he was able to flash out, use the, the plant in the river to get some health back, and barely survives, which enables his team to take this Dragon. Well played from Tim on his most played champion in this academy split. Showing why he likes this Voldebar and why he likes this matchup. Let's get a second look once again. And the big difference here is that Yunbi just gets a big WR combo. And they manage to focus down Yursan and then watch Rosethorn sneak on out. As he gets the shield. He gets wow. the heals from the plant and the takedown. And then wow. he flashes out to dodge out on the W from Hyper. Beautiful mechanical play coming out from the young jungler of Golden Guardians, as he's able to sneak out of that skirmish, get his team that first dragon, and get Golden Guardians a much-needed lead in this game. Very impressive stuff there, and the complete opposite from what happened in game number one, where it was Golden Guardians engaging onto TSM Academy before they were quite ready, and then losing it in the invade. This time it was TSM Academy engaging onto Golden Guardians in the river, and losing out. It wasn't a 4 for all, it was a 3 for all. But still, Golden Guardians ahead now. 1,600 gold as TSM start up the Rift Herald. Golden Guardians have Yunvi, Rosorn, and Niles here. It would be a 3v4, though. Newbie's not level 6, so Galio can't join in. Maybe Rosorn just looks for the steal. He does throw down the lightning. Might look for it. Yursan is here on the flank, though. And Hauntzer as well looking for the engage. Niles in some trouble as Hauntzer locks him down. And Cody's son given the kill. TSM get the Herald and a pick after. Yeah, Golden Guardians were late to that play. They got a little bit greedy trying to contest it. Probably just should have taken the plates for Prismal on this bot side. As honestly, that, that's okay. As I, I really like when Tristana's left in solo lanes alone. Uh, and you, you can actually try and secure Rift Herald uh, without Trist. Cody Sun did come up and manage to get a kill. That is the difference. And I like how TSM are now shifting Tristana top to take advantage of where they have the numbers. Try and use the Rift Herald to get a lot of plates. The TSM's using this Herald rather well, but mm. Prismal has three kills, already has a completed Dusk Blade, and might have the answer here if he is able to get up here in time and respond. I don't think this is going to be a turret It seems like either. he's late. Yeah, I think he's late to the play. It's not going to be the turret going down, but that's four plates over to TSM. Well, the Guardians are trying to respond, but they're not here in time. Yeah, Prismal doesn't get there to take advantage of that item advantage. And Niles yep. goes towards the mid lane instead. So TSM, yeah, even more gold in their pocket. They're still behind slightly, but this is getting them back in the game. It, a little bit of a botched swap there from Golden Guardians, because Hauntzer, he TP'd bot. He got two points for himself on the Tom Cash as well. The Golden Guardians, they give up five points and only find three in a response. This Prismal took two in the bot lane. We'll get another one here. Uh, but overall, good play from TSM. They win the fight around the Herald. They use Shelly very well. They secure themselves seven points across the map and are going to try and use that to bridge the gold deficit they find themselves in after that 3 for all went the way of Golden Guardians early. Golden Guardians still holding the lead for now, though, so let's see what they've decided to do with it. Again, that gold lead's pretty much existing only on Prismal, who's on the top half of the map, but it's kind of awkward because, yeah, you lane swap top to defend against the Herald, but there's no objective up there. So, yeah, we do see Golden Guardians go for another back for Prismal and Newbie. I wouldn't hate putting them mid right now, just so that they're closer to that dragon that will be coming up in a minute 45. Mm -hmm. Golden Guardians could look to continue stacking those. The Rosehorn's also looking at the bottom side right now. If Niles can find here. the engage onto Hauntzer, 
Monster doesn't have flash. Rose Thorn will get onto him. Teleport coming in here from Sword. Does CSM's mid laner make it in time? Monster's tanky. Sword's here. Teleport in from Nunby as well, but the kill is picked up. Monster's down. Golden Guardians now turn attention on the sword. Oh. As back up from Hyper. Big damage on Niles, but doesn't quite get him. The mobility of the least in too much and a double kill to Yunbi. Oh, TSM Academy did not find the counterplay. Golden Guardian successfully picking up two members. That's the power of Galio being able to respond with that semi-global. But that said, TSM, while they lose that play in the bot lane, they pick up uh, the first turret of the game in the top lane and everything is on Cody Sun. The big carry for this team is the, the games go on for them. So even though TSM... They're losing out in the kill score. They're still making nice responses around the map and still finding uh, some ways to get gold back in their pockets as that Tristana with a completed Kraken Slayer before this next dragon will be a force to be reckoned with in this next team fight. Yeah, you see 3-0 on Prismal thinking, okay, he's really ahead. But Cody's son with all those plates, the first turret blood as well has a Mythic too. We saw Golden Guardians flashing a couple members down here, seeing if TSM was going to get aggressive. If Sword pushes out, Yunbi... Looking for a potential assassination. But also, they're fighting for mid-priority. Oh He's going to find it. Gets flash out of sword. The chains still land. Yunbi, does he have the combo? Does he have the damage? Double chains. Not going to jump forward. Now goes forward with the flash. But oh, it's not enough damage. Sword gets out. Uh, so that uh, Yunbi's going so or Yunbi's going so aggressive for that play because he's trying to get the kill to get this dragon. Off that bot lane to play Golden Guardians was late to the reset. They weren't able to get the ideal setup for them off the bat, which is the Blanc Varus in the river first. Because using the poke from both those champions could be very oppressive for TSM, who have a little bit of a lower range composition, especially going up against a, a Varus the Blanc. The Golden Keep Guardians, they had to fight over that mid lane priority and have not been able to stack up these dragons as fast as their aim is. But TSM seem to be seeding this, understanding yeah. that this Cloud Dragon doesn't really mean anything. Golden Guardians will roll a good soul. We're going to trade out this dragon in control over the top side, try and deny the Krugs, get a wave crash in that top of Also really hard for TSM to fight in a 5v5 mm -hmm. when they don't have Mythic on their Rise and also no Flash on Rise. When you have already the Lee Sin, the Volley Bear, the Blanc. We talked about the target that's on Sword's back right now. TSM Academy obviously opting out of that fight, saying no, we do not want to contest for that dragon. That's two for Golden Guardians. They only need two more. As they also invade here onto the Raptors. It will be an Ocean Soul on Summoner's Rift. That's a big team fighting tool here for either of these teams to pick up. But Golden Guardians already faster to it. Let's see if they're able to continue stacking. As they're also looking to take down their first turrets on the map. Golden Guardians are winning out on the map at the moment. But overall, I feel like TSM are still making the right responses as they do find themselves behind. And I think properly calling out the fact that you know, Rise doesn't have a Mythic, Zin Zhao doesn't have a Mythic, and if you are TSM, you're pretty happy about your scaling, just given the fact that you do have Rise Tristana that pump out a ton of DPS in team fights as the game on, and a Tom Kench to try and keep your Rise safe. Uh, it, it's something that TSM feels like as the game goes on, they're going to have a better chance to win these fights, so they're going to seed that Dragon and wait another five minutes to try and get those items to contest the next. 2k, or I'm going to use 1.5k gold lead now for Golden Guardians here. Much better start than last time around. Let's do the check-in on the players get much and Golden worse Guardians. Than last time, so. Yeah, true. <laughs> you know what? That, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it was that's a tough time, start for uh, GG. We, we, we try and forget those ones. You know, it's a selective memory uh, on that. But currently, the Golden Guardians like, wait, this is game one of the series, right? You know, we still have the Miracle Run alive. Everything is going great. As uh, Rose Thorn's been having a very strong performance throughout the series. Mm -hmm. And Prismal as well. Two players that we highlighted going into it. And I think reflecting that faith that we gave them during the pre-show as players to keep watch out here. I know that Golden Gardens Academy, they're just playing for practice now. They're just playing for upsets as they're no longer in the playoff race. But still, you know, impressing nonetheless. And it's cool to see Academy players still showing up here and trying to show their best selves in the big matches. But speaking of, Yunbi could be in some trouble here. 1v1 in Sword. The Realm Warp does take Sword to safety. Oh Niles is here too. Teleport from Hauntzer. Yes, some Academy are very far forward, but look at Newbie about the 1v1 sword right now. Very low. Niles goes in, gets the kill. Newbie traded, flashes, hyper follows, and does pick him up. Can hyper get out now? Hauntzer devours him over the wall, but Rose Thorn is here in chase. Onto your son. Take down the cow. Bring in the thunder. Rose Thorn, massive engage with a double kill. And Hauntzer's trapped all alone now. Yunbi picks up that one on a killing spree. And four members dead for T. 
TSM only traded for newbie Golden Guardians with a massive win. So Golden Guardians were taking that second Rift Herald. TSM see that. They think they can respond on the bot side, but thanks to the TP from Niles and thanks to the fact that Cody Sun, their Fed member, the one that they focused the first turret on, the one that they were trading down in total around the map to get gold on the right person, was never able to join this fight. And Golden Guardians, much like last game, do a great job of splitting things up. Monster TP'd into lane. They see three members isolated in their side of the map. They say that is not allowed. We're going to collapse on you. Focus down these members. And they use the terrain to make this fight go one by one, despite the fact that the numbers were even. Really good play coming out from them. And love the combo from Rosethorn as the flash to bait out the flash from Alistar, following through with the ultimate. Beautiful Voldebear play. As he picks up two, Golden Guardians pick up four. And take a dominant lead on the map now. Much needed for them as they try and snowball uh, the lead they have at the moment to this Ocean Soul, which is spawning in a minute 15. Golden Guardians in a fantastic position to keep stacking these dragons now, too, because those uh, team fight wins get a lot of gold in their pocket onto their carries. No longer just Prismal. Now Yunbi, 3 0 and 6, flexing the muscles here on the sword. Massive uh -oh. damage. Prismal, Chains of Corruption, following up with the arrows. Oh, doesn't get the kill, but that's a nut. Again, flash out of sword. That's just used on cooldown defensively. And sword oh. has been hard shut out in this game. Still hasn't completed a mythic as Golden Guardians. Look to take this final outer turret. It is the mid lane turret, and it should go down. They also, I guess, still have the top lane turret to take out. Speaking of, Cody Sun doing a good job trading himself. Once again, TSM, they're, they're trading down a little bit around, around the map because they are down, but they're getting gold into the right member. You want gold into that Tristana. She's so safe as the game goes on. And Cody Sun is so good when it comes to late game insurance, especially on this champion. Uh, seven plays this split for him on the Tristana as he's been playing it a lot more than some of the other ADs that we have in Academy as Tristana. A, a select champion, definitely one that uh, benefits a lot from team fighting. And TSM have to set up some better team fights as it looks like they're going to be seeding this dragon, which means they have to team fight every dragon from here on out because this will be soul point for Golden Guardians. You do not want to give a team that outranges the Ocean Soul. That is, that is a doomsday scenario. Yeah, you're never going to come back from that situation. And they have a couple members here, but nobody's willing to commit to it. And the fact that Hyper was on the top side, yeah, that's just dragging over TSM. Not really finding any trade, but they will look to catch Yunbi now. LeBlanc over the wall. Oh, he sees them. Cody Sun's committing, though. Looking for massive burst damage on Yunbi. Explosive not a, quite enough, and Yunbi does get out just fine. TSM not able to find the trade. Golden Guardians get that objective for free. We'll roll into the 20 minute mark with a 3k gold lead, three dragons to their name. An early game that with this comp they needed to put together and they managed to do it. Unlike the last one where TSM was able to break their plans. TSM have struggled a little bit in this one with, you know, just it's really difficult into the block and uh, Varus when you have a Tristana. Very low range to start off the game. Of course, picks up range with doubles. Rise doesn't have a lot of range. He gets out interacted by both those champions uh, as the chains and uh, the chain of corruption for Varus do outrange you. Not to mention uh, the arrow as well. And that has given Golden Guardians a little bit of a lead and an advantage on the map. And TSM, they're going to have to come up with a creative solution to get out of this one, Kangas, as mm -hmm. my eyes really go on Hyper, the one that has to pull the trigger. Uh, has the most likelihood to engage in an engage that could be followed up upon rather nicely by Hauntzer and your son. Yeah, that was going to be my next question, is they're behind, so how do they try and come back? If you're identifying Hyper as an engage, uh, yeah, again, also your son, the Alistair, can look for those two. Even Hauntzer on the mm -hmm. Tom Kench, there's tools for TSM to try and find some of these fights, but Golden Guardians, they're so slippery. Elisa and hard to engage on, LeBlanc hard to engage on, and then even if you do, Galio's coming in on top of whoever you're on, so you better hope that you kill them fast. Golden Guardians have played their composition very impressively here, yeah. despite the fact that TSM have tried, been trying to play the cross map and just go for these turrets instead. And they'll as, even make it play another. As odd as it sounds, my eyes are on Haunter on the Tom Kench in these fights, because he has a pretty big decision to make uh, up against Golden Guardians, right? Like, let's say an Alistar combo lands or Hyper is able to find a good engage. Do you W in and kind of abandon Sword on the Rise, or do you kind of hang back and try and peel for that Rise as much as possible? Uh, as Rise, of course, only at Neverfrost, but still is able to pump out so much damage in teamfights if 
members of Golden Guardians are grouped up and rocking a Galio Volibear Lee Sin. Those rise combos and chains could be landing a lot of damage this game goes on. We see him catching another wave topside. It's just try and get Sword a couple of waves. Try and get Sword some gold. <laughs> Let's get this rise online here if you're TSM Academy. Because last time they faced against Golden Guardians, it was also a 1 1. Again, they're, they're holding the line at sixth place. This is the easiest match that they have this week. So getting a 2 0 here would feel amazing if they lose this game to Golden Guardians, who, again, 3.5k gold ahead on Dragon Soul Point, looking pretty likely with their composition. TSM will need to be sweating. The Mortals are right on their heels. They have to play Cloud9 tomorrow. Not the easiest opponent to deal with in the Academy system. Not Invincible. This isn't the Cloud9 Academy of old. If you remember in years past where Cloud9 were heads and shoulders above everybody else. But still, they're only above TSM in the standings. And uh, looking like a tougher team to beat. TSM Academy need to find a way back into this game to make sure that they're holding on to their playoff spot. because They do not want to have to play through an entire other tournament just to make it back into Proving Grounds. Let's lay out this dragon fight as we are a minute 10 away. This is going to be an important one as Golden Guardians are doing a good job. So they have the lead. They were able to reset early. And so Varus can just sit mid, ensure that they maintain priority over the mid lane and therefore priority over the river. And Prismal in that choke, that's exactly where you want to be as Varus. Just firing the arrows over the wall where you have so much safety. And TSM would have to burn so much to try and engage as TSM, much like their LCS team, preferring to set up through the bot lane. As this gives them more two angles to try and flank from, the Niles will have to ward hop out. Ooh, I like that oh. Dragon's Rage. He just kicks Hauntzer away. Actually, oh, we did, he didn't have a ward. He, yeah, didn't he didn't have a didn't ward. Have any wards. Okay, All so right. that's a small win. Yeah, nice pickup for TSM Academy. They sent a couple members there for it, so Prismal pushes in the mid lane, but now Golden Guardians need to think about backing off here. They actually don't have vision priority around the Dragon right now. We do see a lot of TSM Academy wards some have cleared out, but there is one deep one. Hanser and Sword <clears throat> could look for that teleport flank. I think Golden Guardians need to respect that. Oh, They're actually teleporting in themselves. Yursan's looking for the flank, but he's caught out now. He does find it, but it's only onto Newbie. Not the biggest engage for Alistair. And he limps away with the tiniest health bar. Hanser as well. There's the pick out of Yursan. He's dead. Hanser flashes. Niles follows. Gets another kill. And with the front line engaged down for TSM, Hyper's going to have to look for a miracle steal on this dragon. If Golden Guardians even give it to him, he's over the wall. I don't think Golden Guardians know that. Niles will check it, oh, though. Now. Sees him, <laughs> taunts him up, knock him up, and get the kill. Yunbi picks up that one. Cody Sun runs away, and that will be Dragon Soul to Golden Guardians. Beautiful setup for Golden Guardians. And once again, the big difference, Sword. He didn't TP to the fight, which he had to do as Golden Guardians. He had mid-priority. He was stuck manicuring the wave. And that's why Golden Guardians, they had the numbers advantage. Niles TP'd in so aggressively despite not having Flash, not having ultimate, because they knew that they were going to win that fight. And now they're going to have to set up as Yursan. He doesn't have ultimate. They're looking for the pick. He's walking right into the brush. He gets caught. Easy oh. kill for Golden Guardians as they're also on the Baron simultaneously. They didn't even have... Their DPS there, Prismal, the Blug, looking for the picks instead. That means objective and even more gold in their pocket. Yeah, this game's pretty much over here, Cubby. Golden Guardians, despite losing game one, losing their playoff dreams, they uh, seem like they have a score to settle with TSM Academy, and they're looking to cash in. It's got, it's got to be a little bit of a bittersweet game two here for Golden Guardians, as they, they know that they're going to have to go through that second tournament. Um, but good to see them putting together a performance that... Uh, is one to be feared by the amateur teams that will have to go up against this academy squad. As Golden Guardians do have a score to settle with amateur as well, right? They got knocked out by Zeus Gaming 3-0 early in the season as they actually participated in Challenges Uprising, the first tier two. To get some more experience, get some more stage games under the belt of uh, their new academy roster going to this split. Of course, with Nubian and Niles, both uh, a little, uh, being in academy based on some of the swaps from Golden Guardians. And... That synergy has been growing for this team, a team that took 5th, 6th in Proving Grounds last split, despite uh, having to play through amateur tournaments once again. They're looking to do the same as Newbie it might be in trouble. On. DSM found a nice engage, but Newbie does go into the stasis. And now Golden Guardians can look for the oh re-engage. They just blow up Hauntzer. He's supposed to be the tank. He's supposed to be the front line. Oh. And they also get the pick out of Sword right as the ultimate goes through. 
That's going to be game. They have the Baron. They have a 5v3. This is minimum an inhibitor. And TSM Academy scratching their heads thinking, where did we go wrong? We had sixth place locked in here going into the week. And now, depending on how the rest of Immortals versus Cloud9 goes, they can have a very stressful day, too, as they're also hoping to hold on to that playoff spot. They will have one last base defense. There's actually not a big push now by Golden Guardians. Another Death Brush set up. They got one play, and they just keep going back Ooh. to it. It will take that tier two in the mid lane, and now on the Inhibitor turret bot side, but Hunter and Sword will be back up. DSM Academy could look for a 5v5 defense at the Inhibitor. Let's see how hard Golden Guardians push. I mean, they have Ocean Soul, right? They can go as hard as they want, as here comes the ult, here comes the fight. Agent Hanser Hunter again. It's a tank. Here's not with a big knockup, but there's just no follow-up damage. Who's supposed to follow up the cow when Golden Guardians are this far ahead? They'll pick up Hyper. They'll pick up Hanser. And saw or Sword, Cody's son, and your son will just watch as their Nexus turrets are focused. Now, Golden Guardians have done it. They're out of playoffs, but they're still a threat, and they will take the game against CSM Academy after pushing a couple more waves. I also peel back onto this middle inhibitor. We see Yunbi backing, has the teleport available, so we'll make it back into this one. And TSM are just gonna say, oh, let's save the KDAs. Let's not try and save this game, because we know it's due, but under their Nexus, under their Fountain, they almost go down. There's a Nexus picked up for Golden Guardians. They will go 1-1 for a second time against TSM Academy. Nice split, good comeback from Golden Guardians. And honestly, two pretty clean games from each team, right? They Got the lead early, managed to snowball it rather cleanly for both of these guys. So uh, I'd say 1-1 one, one split well deserved from both sides. And mm -hmm. kind of bittersweet for Golden Guardians, of course, not being a part of the Academy playoffs. They would have needed a 4-0 and a lot of help from other teams around the league. It was a pretty pretty crazy backdoor scenario that we had laid out for them. Not going to be the case, but nice of them to show off in this second game why they're going to be a threat for UGP and why these amateur teams that have yet to qualify for Proving Grounds will have to look out for them as they are a team that if they get ahead early, they're pretty good at snowballing it through, and they showed it in that second game. Yeah, and also just showing that Academy as a whole is a threat in Proving Grounds. And we, we are expecting, even though the bottom four Academy teams do have to play through UGP, that they're all favorited to make it out. There's six slots left, so two more amateur teams would be able to make it in, but the top four amateur teams have already qualified for Proving Grounds, just the way that the format worked out. As we get a replay package here of... All of the team fights that went in Golden Guardians' favor. It's just the complete opposite from what we saw in game one, where it was just TSM highlight, TSM highlight, running away with that early game lead. This time around, it was Golden Guardians, like you said, finding that early lead and showing that they do know how to snowball those. And I love the Lightning taking down your son in the back half of the fight. As Golden Guardians, I mean, this setup around the Dragon. Uh, they had a big lead at this point, and champions that do well when you get in the river first, but still, really nice to see them execute this cleanly, and even snuff out Piper on the back half looking for the steal and the brush, but not able to get it as Golden Guardians. But the finishing touches on a rather dominant game from them once again, and interested to see who he managed to pull for an interview as uh, Golden Guardians will have to go back to the drawing board, start planning out for the amateur tournament, as of course they will not find themselves in the academy playoffs, but They'll have a chance to uh, be a thorn in the side of yet another team tomorrow as uh, they will yeah. actually be taking on CLG. Uh, and posturing for seeding is somewhat important as there are still a couple amateur teams that are pretty strong that have not yet qualified for proving grounds. Notably, Evil Genius's Prodigies and Zeus Gaming, two teams that will be in Resolve as well. A couple teams that will be looking to sneak in the proving grounds, but we'll have to go through some academy teams to prove it. And Golden Guardians, uh, not going to try and let them... Uh, Give them any light to try and make it to that tournament, right? We got other plans. Exactly. And yeah, looking at the rest of Golden Guardian's schedule, highlighting that CLG Academy match, it's just, if they 2-0 that and a TSM <laughs> can't blow now, now, man, it, they were so close. I wanted it to happen. I wanted to believe. But we actually got to chat with chaos. a member. Yeah, I want, I love it at the end of the season when you see these kinds of uh, playoff runs happen. Uh, but we do actually get a chance to chat with Golden Guardian's bot laner. I believe we have Prismal on the call here for our post-game interview. Prismal, congratulations on picking up a win. Condolences for not uh, making the miracle run happen, though, not making it into playoffs. So I want to give you a chance, first off, to just talk us through that series and what it was like to bounce back for that game number two and what the team's mentality was going into it, knowing that playoffs weren't on the line anymore, but still showing up very impressive. For sure, yeah. I mean, uh, in the first game, it was a little bit of an 
unfortunate circumstance where early game we gave them a really big gold advantage and uh, it was a tragic fight in Bot River. So that game, we did try our best to come back, but obviously that one was, was pretty rough from the get-go. And after that, I'd say like no one was really too tilted about it. I mean, things happen. And then for the second game, I feel like we bounced back pretty well. Everyone had a pretty good mentality coming into it. And I feel like we definitely played a lot better. And in terms of the whole not making playoffs, I feel like we still have a good shot. I mean, making it into Proving Grounds and just every game still matters to us, even though we're not in the running anymore. And so we're all just trying our best to, to still win and do the best we can. And this is something that you and your squad have experience with, especially you, Rose Thorne, and Yunbi, as you had to go through the amateur circuit in the last split in order to qualify for Proving Grounds, which you did. Had a great showing, taking a fifth, sixth finish as well. Um, what did you learn from that last run, too, that you think is going to uh, kind of help you get through that circuit yet again this time? I definitely think the name of the game for, for our team is adaptability and being able to recognize kind of how things change as you're playing the game because you can always go into games and have like a set plan, like, all right, we're going to go do this this game, we're going to play on this lane, but things can always happen. And especially in, in those tournaments, I feel like random things happen all the time and we as a team have gotten a lot better at just kind of like playing around each other and saying like, okay, this is different. We got to do this now. And we're just working as a team a lot better because we have a lot more experience in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, my next question for you, Prismal, I'm going to, at first I need some clarification just before I throw you a hardball. Uh, what kind of scouting has Golden Guardians, if any, done for the uh, amateur teams that you will now be playing up against in the UGP qualifiers. Have you started scouting for that yet? Do you have you been looking at any of the teams, how they're looking? Uh, I think we have all of them downloaded, but I don't think. I mean, I'm not going to say too much, but I feel like we're pretty confident going into into the event. All right. Well, then, with that said, you've been impressing a lot of people uh, as an AD carry in the academy scene. I think a lot of people ranking you in the top three conversation now, based on your performances throughout the summer. So I'm curious your thoughts on some of the amateur AD carries coming in as well, especially some of the ones that you might be playing up against. Is there anybody in particular that you're excited to play against now that we know you will be in UGP? I would say no one is really that big of a super standout to me. I mean, Shiro, before he made the whole climb to LCS, was super like hype for me personally, but everyone else is kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't really think anyone is super talented or insane or like the next big thing or anything but i do feel like the level of competition overall has gotten a lot better but no real like this guy is really good it, it's good to uh, hear and, and obviously like one of the goals to kind of blending in uh the two scenes as we move out throughout the season is to kind of lift everyone else up uh prismal but but before we let you go I just want to kind of open the floor to you uh any thank yous or shout outs you'd like to give uh you guys do have a match against clg tomorrow uh which i'm excited about but before we let you go here uh, anything else you'd like to say uh, just, yeah, uh, thanks to uh, all my coaches and all my players on uh, that I play with every day. Everyone's putting in a lot of work to to get a lot better, and I think it is beginning to to show more. I mean, we've been playing together for, for a long time now, and I think we're all just excited to, to keep going and to keep working hard. So excited to show all the fans and whoever is watching these games uh, a good level of play, hopefully. Love to hear it. Well, Prismo, you might say that the competition's getting closer, but all I heard is that you're going to be the next big thing. So thank you so much for coming in for our post-game interview. Congratulations on the win, and best of luck going into your series against CLG tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. Love to hear from uh, especially uh, players that have been you know, developing through the amateur scene now into Academy as well. So Prismo, yeah, the story of that player... He's been around for quite a while and has developed incredibly. And yeah, I would not be too surprised if we see Prismal moving up into the LCS at some point next year. Uh, so yeah, keep your eyes on him, everybody. Yeah, I mean, he's a player that, thinking back to 2019 summer, summer uh, he won the Academy split with 100 Thieves. And he's put together some really nice performances on Golden Guardians and was a huge, really integral part of that fifth, sixth finish that Golden Guardians had in Proving Grounds. I know that... Halfway through the split, uh, he, he wasn't feeling the best about his play uh, with Golden Guardians, but I think that with their recent form, I know that Golden Guardians are going to be now guaranteed to be in UGP. Uh, but I think that Golden Guardians have actually looked pretty good in the recent form. They put together some nice early games. I think we saw a great example of that in that second game. It was a very clean win from them after they got the lead. Mm -hmm. And excited to see them take it to a lot of those uh, semi-pro and amateur teams as I think they're going to learn a lot going up against some of these academy teams that 
have way more experience going into Proving Grounds this time around. 36 regular season games instead of 9. I think it's going to be a different beast and a different animal for them yeah. to do at this time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, best of luck to Golden Guardians going into that one. But we will be sending it to a short break here today because we still got more Academy games ahead of us and more playoff implications on the line as we got Team Liquid Academy taking on FlyQuest Academy right after this. Do your stretches, grab your water now because we'll be right back with more League of Legends action after this. Verizon believes everyone deserves the best. That's why we start with 5G from America's most reliable network. Verizon 5G is next level. Then give families plans to mix and match, so you only pay for what you need starting at $35. You get so much more than this a great network. And offer the best in entertainment on select unlimited plans, like Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus, as well as Discovery+, Plus, with a Galaxy S21 Plus 5G when you buy one. There's no reason to settle for less than the best, only from Verizon. 